Yeah, yeah, no, no, not that one. Uh, yeah, if you go into the lower right-hand corner, yeah, that's the picture I'm talking about. I mean, is that incredible or what? I mean, can people actually do that in that position? I just, oh, uh, hang on a second. Uh, hi, I'm Ron Lindsay. I'm uh, president and CEO of the Center for Inquiry. Uh, and as you can tell, you, you caught me in the, in the middle of an important business transaction, which uh, helps explain, by the way, why I have this formal attire on today. We do have a, a fairly exacting uh, dress code at the Center for Inquiry. Uh, so we do require people to wear sport coats and things like that when they're involved in professional activities. Although we also try to foster uh, a relaxed and creating atmosphere for our staff as well. So even though I'm wearing a sport coat, I don't have any trousers on at the moment. Uh, but I'm here actually today to talk to you about a very serious matter, and that is humor. Uh, some people have the impression that humanists don't really have a sense of humor. We're regarded as somewhat uh, serious, dry, academic, argumentative types, the, the type of person who would bend your ear at a cocktail party for several hours about whether prayers should be said at a football game. Okay, well, that is true, but uh, nonetheless, I think occasionally from time to time we do manage to show a flash of humor, and I guess I'll try to confirm that today by uh, giving you some jokes of my own. And I'm going to use, uh, as my riff, the light bulb jokes. I'm sure you're familiar with the, the many light bulb jokes that have been told from time to time, some of which are somewhat offensive, and I will try to, my best today not to cross uh, too many boundaries and insult too many people. Uh, and I'll limit my jokes to certain classifications of individuals. Let's start off uh, politically. Uh, how many liberals does it take to replace a light bulb? Ten. One to change the bulb and nine to apologize for the bulb being broken. Now, of course, at the center, we're non-political, so since I start out with a attack on liberals, I also have to do something similar for conservatives. So how many conservatives does it take to replace a light bulb? Zero. With conservatives, you only get one light bulb. All right, now that we've covered the political spectrum, let's try to think of some other categories. Well, I'm a lawyer and a philosopher, so why don't we pick on those two beloved groups. Uh, with philosophers, how many philosophers does it take to replace a light bulb? Well, it depends on how one defines light bulb. Uh, that joke, by the way, shows why Bill Clinton was actually one of our most underrated philosophers of all time. Uh, you'll recall in his deposition when he asked uh, whether something had taken place, uh, whether something was the case, he said, well, it all depends on what the meaning of is is. Very philosophical statement. Okay, lawyers. How many lawyers does it take to replace a light bulb? What light bulb? And finally, humanists. We can't refrain from poking fun at ourselves. So how many humanists does it take to replace a light bulb? Well, as many as are willing to spend three hours deba debating the pros and cons of replacing the light bulb. All right, that's my attempt at light bulb humor. Now, you may think that you can do better than that. And you're probably right. You probably can do a lot better than that. And here's your opportunity to prove it. The Secular Humanist Bulletin, the publication of our affiliate, the Council for Secular Humanism, is running a humor contest. And we're inviting people to submit entries to that contest. Uh, the full details are set forth in the Secular Humanist Bulletin, which I hope you receive. Uh, if you don't, we are going to place the contest rules on our website. Essentially, there are these. You have to submit an entry of no more than 500 words. The topic is basically, if you're choosing, we do ask you to keep the entries fairly clean, fairly non-offensive. Uh, they have to be submitted, I believe, by January 23rd uh, of this year. And we are going to be offering prizes. Uh, the grand prize winner uh, will receive a copy of the new Encyclopedia of Unbelief uh, that will be signed both by the editor, Tom Flynn, and by Richard Dawkins, who wrote the preface for the encyclopedia. But we also have a consolation prize for the, the person who comes in second place. That person will receive signed copies of the Secular Conscience by my colleague Austin Dacey. And I can say it's a, it's a very good book, very thought-provoking. I actually disagreed with Austin on many of his arguments, but nonetheless, I thought they were well set forth, well worth a reading, and also a copy of Future Bioethics by some obscure writer of some sort 
can't remember the person's name at this moment. But you normally get that offer, if I can imitate uh, late night advertisements, but uh, although we're not going to actually offer anything in addition to the books, these books are actually multi-purpose. They not only serve as a good read, but if you take the dust cover off, you can use the edge to remove grout from your bathroom. I know because I've used this on occasion and it's worked very well. So you can see these are valuable prizes and I encourage you to submit entries. The entries can be sent by email to info at secularhumanism.org. Uh, there is one proviso. If you actually want to enter the contest and win the prizes, you have to be a member of the Council for Secular Humanism, an associate member. But you can sign up at the same time that you submit an entry if you go to the uh, website for an affiliate, and that's www.secularhumanism.org. You'll see there that there is a place where you can click and join immediately as an associate member of the Council. Uh, the minimum membership fee is uh, very small. It's a bargain. $20, which will give you all the uh, benefits of being a member uh, of the Council for Secular Humanism, and will entitle you to enter the contest and perhaps receive these prizes. But, you know, at CFI we believe in giving options to people. So if for whatever reason, some bizarre irrational reason, you actually don't want to join the Council for Secular Humanism, we still like to see what you regard as good humor. So if you don't want to enter the contest, I invite you to submit your humor entries just by comments to this blog. Uh, again, I'll remind you we like to keep the, the entries as, as clean and non-offensive, but still funny as possible. So we do reserve the right, of course, to review your entries, and if we find them perhaps crossing the line, we may remove them, but I think that's unlikely, knowing what an intelligent, common-sense crowd we have out there, I hope. Uh, so please submit your entries. We'd like to see them. Uh, we'd like to prove to the world that secular humans actually do have a sense of humor. Uh, and as I say, you can submit your, your comments, uh, your suggestions as to what you regard as humorous just by responding to this blog entry. Thanks for your time, and now I do have to get back to my phone call. Yeah, I mean, I found that uh, just fantastic. And there's another, go to the other page and there's something even better.